This is a battle between the queens who run all the simps. Who make us believe they make us whole. Yes, Hutao and Ayaka. What is up? Welcome back to another Whisker Chan Banger video. In today's video, as you have heard at the beginning, this is a battle between Ayaka and Hutao. And many of you are probably already thinking, wait, what are you talking about, Whisker Chan? They're not even that close, they're not even that close together. Well, first off, if you have not watched my recent video, which has a Ayaka release date speculation, go watch that right now. The link or the tab will be in the white tab up above as well as the end screen. So you can press on that and watch that. But basically what I think personally is that Ayaka is going to be around 1.5 to 1.6. And if she is in 1.5, that is after the uh, the Mondstadt Wind Festival or basically the reruns and all that. So honestly, if you think about it, everybody is saving for Hutao right now. So what better way to say, okay... Should you dump all your gems into the tower or should you keep saving for Ayaka? Is the whole main question. So, in today's video, we are going to give you that answer. But before we even get into this video, if you are new to the channel, make sure you smash that subscribe button down below. And join the subscribers on the grind to 2,800. We are almost hitting that goal, guys. Go ahead and hit that button down below. And hit the like button as well as the notification button to be notified of all my daily uploads. Without further ado, let's get right into this video. So, as I stated, guys, um... Throughout all the acts, we have already went through the prologue, which was Mondstadt. We have already went through Act 1, the fall of the Archaic God or Lord, which is Li Yue. And now we are coming up on the, the basically the third area, which is Inazuma, which is Act 1. Uh, no, Act 2. Which is Act 2, as you can see, which is the region of Electro, featuring the character Ayaka Kamisato. So guys, as we slowly approach this... Y'all already know we're about to get in 1.3 at the end of 1.3 is going to be Hutao. And then, you know, 1.4 is going to have the Mondstadt Festival. After that, we have really nothing that we can count on. No content, no more festivals we don't know about. So, what are they going to be doing? Are they going to be releasing the new area? Because we've had Lee Yue since 1.1, like I said. Are they going to be releasing the new area? So, we're going to get Ayaka at 1.5. And if they do... Should you save, keep saving for her? Either way, should you keep saving for her? Or should you summon on Hu Tao? This is a battle between the most... One, no, two of the most anticipated female characters. Because you are you are all simps. This is the battle between two of the most anticipated female characters that everybody wants. So we're going to settle this fair and square. So before we go into Hu Tao first. Because that's who I like to talk about first. Before we talk about anybody else. Honestly, if you think about it, even if she comes in 1.5, we have more than two months to save Primal Gems. Now, it depends on how many events we get, on how we could get Primal Gems back up. But to get a guaranteed, like, 28,800 Primal Gems, that's going to take a really, really good grind. And I don't think that that's enough. Two months is enough to do that. Unless you are a pay-to-play player. So anyway, let's go ahead and get into Tao. As you all know, this character is a really, really focused very very focused dps and the reason i say this is because she goes she's going for as much dps as possible on her skill her elemental burst and her passives now if you don't know what i mean first off her stat progression is crit damage she has a really low base attack but that's made up with her base hp as well as her crit damage especially if you have a crit damage build on the character she has really good multipliers for her normal and charged attacks and that does the charge attack does come in handy considering that she will apply the blood blossom effect on her charge attack which is part of her elemental skill, which is her transformation to give her even more attack based on her max HP, uh, if you did not know. So, the attack bonus gained this way cannot exceed 400% of Hutao's base attack. This will convert all her damage to pyro. It cannot be overridden. Um, charge attacks will apply the Blood Blossom effect to enemies hit, and this will increase Hutao's resistance to interruption. Now, once you apply the Blood Blossom to an enemy, this will tick every 4 seconds and has an 8 second duration, meaning it will hit for a total of two times depending on your level say for example level 10 it'll hit for 115.2 percent two times which is a good amount of damage and then this form lasts for nine seconds so while it's ticking for that four seconds each time uh for eight seconds you're going to be hitting all this damage right here from your attack increase on your max hp uh based on your max hp and of course this form will take 30 percent of your current hp but that's not to be really really like be discouraged over for the reason that her elemental burst as you can see 
will regenerate her HP. If you did not know, this character is the first character in the game as an elemental burst. That is a DPS that does tons of damage that can regenerate HP and also has a low HP skill damage. That is this is the first character in the game that has this. So uh anyway, another thing to note is the blood blossom effect has like a really really good multiplier if you did not notice. It has an actual insane multiplier. And also on Constellation 2 I believe it applies as you can see the blood blossom effect will get even more attack. As you can see the blood blossom damage by the amount equal to 10% of Plutal's max HP at the time of inter or at the time the effect is applied additionally spirit soother will also apply blood blossom effect so it will make it even more versatile do even more damage because you'll be able to do it in your skill as well as your elemental burst so there's not a time you won't be able to do your blood blossom so it's absolutely insane does tons of damage really really good mini damage when you got your attack increase to do even more damage and all that and dude you're gonna do tons of power damage so having a power build on this character would be very ideal but anyway, as I was saying, the first character in the game to have low HP skill damage, as well as skill HP regeneration and low HP skill regeneration, and it's absolutely insane. Because this character wants to be played below 50% health, and the reason I say this is because on her weapon, which is the Staff of Homo, which will be coming right next to her banner, that weapon actually has, as you can see, not only does it have HP increased by 20%, it has a attack bonus based on 0.8% of the Wilder's max HP, and then when the Wilder's HP is less than 50% then you get another attack bonus, or you get it increased by additional 1% of max HP attack bonus so once you drop below 50% health if you have her weapon you get another attack bonus so you get 1.8% attack bonus right then you get low HP skill damage and then you're in your Prometa Papilio so you get a attack increase based on your max HP and then of course guys if you didn't know her passive gives her a 33% increased power damage bonus when she is less than or equal to 50% health. So basically dropping below 50% health is literally going to do all the damage. All the massive damage because everything is triggered once she drops below 50% health. Everything, all her buffs, all that. So she's going to be doing tons of damage. Low HP skill damage, you know. She's going to be doing tons of damage because the attack increase. Tons of damage because even more, if you have the Saf Puma, even more attack increase based on your max HP. Especially if you drop below 50% HP. It's just going to be insane. And the energy cost for Elements Burst is 60. The cooldown is 15 seconds, which is normal. But it's really, really good because I feel like she's going to get energy back extremely fast with her Promethea Papilio, which is the Elements of Skill. Or if she doesn't get energy back really fast, you can run a energy battery on the team similar to Albedo. Or you can run an animal energy battery like Venti. Or you can run an animal energy battery like Sucrose or Jean. It's up to you. And plus, with the 4-piece VV, you could decrease, you know, the elemental res of your enemy. And it'll make it way easier to do tons of damage with this character. You could go for nuke numbers like 500,000 or, you know, 1 million if you're lucky. So anyway, basically, this is an insane character. Her other passive is actually pretty cool because it basically says that once the Parmina Papilio state is activated to guide to afterlife is over, all allies in the party, excluding the Tao, will have the crit rate increased by 12% for 8 seconds. Why this is good is because a subscriber of mine pointed this out to me. Say for example, you're, you, you're done with the Promethea Papilio, right? And then you feel like she has pretty low HP. Swap out to your secondary DPS or swap out to your main DPS if that's the case. And now their crit rates increased by 12%, which makes their crits more consistent, which means you can hit more damage. So say for example, you have Zhao as your first and primary DPS. You switch back to him, you have more crit rate. Say you got the loop, you switch back to him, you have more crit rate. So it's a really, really good thing for a sub DPS or for a main DPS, this passive right here, so that you could like stall and then like wait until you get uh, Permita Papilio back or wait until you get her elemental burst and then do her burst to get her health back and also do the low HP skill damage. So really, unless you have a healer on the team, you really don't, if you have a healer on the team, you don't really need this. But if you don't, then it'll be very, very, very viable. This passive is extremely good. So definitely don't sleep on this guy. It's definitely good for sub DPS as well as main DPS if you have don't have her as the main DPS. So really that is her. That is her summarized. These are her essential materials if you want to take a picture. Uh, we just got this boss in 1.3. So guys, you better get to grinding if you definitely want Hu Tao. But after I talk about Ayaka, I will discuss which you should get or which you should save for or should you keep saving for Ayaka and why. Ayaka guys, the forgotten queen. A cryo sword user guys. So anyway, she still has to be updated. I want you to take this with a hand of salt. Okay, so her stat progression is cryo damage. It goes up to 28.8% as you can see. Her base HP is pretty good and her base attack is actually pretty high for a sword user. Of course, really high actually. So anyway, we have a really good defense on her as well. 
and if we scroll down we have really good multipliers on her normal and charge attacks as well as you can see so anyway her I want to say that she has two elemental skills just like I said before she has two and you're probably saying wait what do you mean well there is her Kamisato art Yoka where she emits ice around herself and shortly afterward launches nearby opponents dealing AoE cryo damage and this has a really good multiplier at level 10 is 433% level 15 is 571.9% and a cooldown of 8 seconds, right? Which is not bad. Which is not bad at all, right? But then we have her other elemental skill, or you can call it her sprint, but I call it elemental skill for what it can do. Is the Kamasato Art Sinho. This is where she sprints, and she hides within a swift flow of sleep that moves as she moves. In Sinho form, she moves at a high speed on water. When she reappears, the following effects are produced. She will inflict cold on nearby enemies. And cold congeals along Ayaka's blade, converting her attack damage into cryo damage for a brief period. Now, guys, this is insane because it shows you she has a cryo damage stat progression, right? That means you can you can do way more cryo damage with a goblet, right? And then if you have like an animal character with a four-piece VV on your team decreasing the res, you'll do tons of tons of cryo damage, guys. So look at this. Look at it this way. This right here is what you're mainly going to be doing to dodge. So every time you dodge, you're literally going to have a cryo damage blade. So you're going to have this most of the time, okay? And also, inflicting cold on nearby opponents without even having to do anything is very beneficial, especially for how the Blizzard Strayer set works, guys. And I'm pretty sure you all are familiar with that because everybody probably has their Ganyu built with that set. Basically, once you apply cold to somebody, that's 20% increased crit rate. Once you freeze somebody, that's an additional 20% increased crit rate, which is for a max of 40% increased crit rate. And honestly, if you have, say for example, you actually go for both of them if you're a pay to play, you have Ayaka as well as Kutao. Once you use Kutao's Permita Papilio, and then you, you're you done with her Permita Papilio, and you go to Ayaka, her crit rate's increased by 12%. Ain't that cool? So you're gonna have even more crit. That's how Kutao is supposed to really, really work with that passive for sub DPS or for main DPS, which is pretty cool. So anyway, as I said, she's gonna be putting out a lot of cryo damage. So she is to be built cryo, of course. And now we have her Kamisato art Sumetsu, which is her blade storm or elemental burst, if you wanna call it that. So anyway, this has two types of damage in a really good duration. And the reason I say it's a really good duration is because of the damage multipliers on the slashing damage. Now, this will deal cryo damage over time to enemies in this path, and after the damage is over or has ended, the creative blade storm will burst, dealing cryo damage to all enemies in a bigger radius. As a slashing damage, at level 10 is 131.04%, and level 15 is 172.9%. Now, the blade sword damage is once it explodes. As you can see, at level 10 is 262.08%, and level 15 is 345.8%. Now, keep in mind, the duration is five seconds so you're going to be smacking this slashing damage for five seconds and then at the end the blade storm is going to do that big big chunk of explosion of cryo damage and the cooldown is 15 seconds and it's cost 60. you're going to be getting this back extremely fast considering you're going to be doing a lot of cryo damage and you might have a decent energy recharge on this character uh and if even if she don't like i said you can go for a build on the team a team comp of energy battery whether it's albedo gene sucrose venti Whoever you want, really, you can go for that. And honestly, it would just be very beneficial, especially if, you, if she doesn't have a really good energy recharge. But yeah. Anyway, let's go ahead and go over her passives. We have Canton Simoyo Narito. Normal attack hits on enemies affected by Cryo have a 6% out of 18% chance to respectively shorten the cooldown of Kamets uh, Kamisato Art Hiyoka by 0.5 seconds. The reason this is so good is because, like I said, once you sprint and you come out of sprint, you're going to have your sword. It's going to be cryo for a short period of time, right? So you're going to be dodging most of the time, meaning your sword's going to be cryo most of the time, meaning literally you're, you're just going to be doing tons of cryo damage on normal attack hits, right? So that 6% out of 18% chance to respectively shorten the cooldown is very likely because you're going to be doing it the whole time. And that 0.5 seconds is definitely going to hit trust me i feel like 0.5 seconds when i put double animal comp in my team i didn't know how beneficial it was to have that five percent reduced cooldown five percent reduced cooldown was is so big and that's basically what this is it's 0.5 seconds so as soon as this goes by it's literally you're, you're gonna have your burst uh not your burst your skill back extremely fast so i feel like this is very beneficial and also another thing to note is the amatsumi kunatsumi iahigato 
While in Kamisato Art Sinho form, Kamisato Ayaka marks nearby opponents below 30% HP, leaving Sinho form near those marked opponents will immediately hit them with a normal attack that deals crowd damage, equal to 300% of her attack. And this counts as a charge attack. And that is going to do a massive amount of damage, guys. And this really, I want to say that this damage is ridiculous. 300% of attack, and I also want to state that does the Black Sword's passive work with this since this counts as a charge attack? As you know, the passive of the Black Sword not only heals you based on a certain amount, uh, it also gives you a, if you have refinement 5, a 40% increased normal and charge attack bonus, right? So does that 40% charge attack bonus apply to this since this counts as a charge attack? So does that mean that this 300% is going to hit even, hit even harder with the Black Sword? That's what I just want to know. But uh, you, you guys let me know in the comment section below. But honestly, this character is absolutely insane. We have a Cryo character right now that is nerve-wracking, which is Ganyu. I'm pretty sure you all, guys all know. And there's a lot of people that are not trading Ganyu for anybody. But for those people that enjoy the game, for those people that want to collect and just want to you know, continue to open their roster, get new characters, be a simp, <laughs> yeah. I just want to say that getting this cryo character will be very beneficial. Now, like I said, this character might be coming around 1.5 to 1.6. Many other people speculate different times, many people speculate later later, but I speculate 1.5 1.6 and we will see really soon after the Mondstadt Festival in 1.4. So definitely that's something to look forward to. But anyway, between Ayaka and Hu Tao, who should you say for and why? Well, as Hu Tao is quickly approaching us. I feel like definitely without a doubt, getting Hu Tao would be out of the question. She's one of the best characters in the game, and the reason I stated, transformation, low HP skill damage, sk low HP skill regeneration, insane passives, she's a low HP warrior, she's one of the most different characters in this game besides Zhao. So I feel like getting this character not only will be fun, but also will be a really, really good experience for the free to play player, especially if you get this character. So without a doubt, I just want to get it out the way right now. Go for Hu Tao. Ayaka comes in 1.5, you have two months to save Primal Gems. That's at least, you can at least get a 90 pull off. If you get really lucky, if you do your commissions every day, if you search chests every day, if we get events, you literally, and, and in 1.4, we're gonna get tons of events. So you're gonna be able to get tons and tons of Primal Gems back. So in my opinion, what you should do is you're gonna be able to have a 90 pull by the time Ayaka comes out. Go for Hu Tao. Do not miss this. For those people wondering whether you should go for Hu Tao or Ayaka, if you are wondering that, go for Hu Tao 100% because you will have enough Primal Gems by the time Ayaka comes out in those two months, in that two month margin. Or that two month, and yeah, that will actually be not two months, it will be like three months because it's a six week between each update. So six weeks, six weeks, that means that we're going to have a total of three months. So you have three months to save. So honestly, you have way more than enough time. We're gonna get way more than enough content. We're gonna get way more than enough Primal Gems. Go for Hu Tao, save for Ayaka, but if you want Constellation for Ayaka, that is understandable. You would probably have to start saving now with what you have and keep saving. And honestly, if you don't know what the Constellations for Ayaka, real quick, I'll actually go over them. So we have the first one, which increases the damage of her Kamisoto Art Hyoka against enemies affected by Cryo by 20%, which is very, very insane. Because like I said, any Constellations that increase a damage on your kit are insane. They're like something to be definitely get Constellation for. So that's Constellation 1, which is very, very insane. And on Hu Tao, as you do know, to get a, a damage increase of any kind, you have to get Constellation 2. Anyway, we have the Constellation 2 of Ayaka, which is Ai Sugetsu. Decreases the cooldown of Kamisato Art Sumetsu by 2 seconds. Increases energy recharge by 15%. Yeah, so she's going to be a burst unit, especially if you get uh, C2. You get C2, you're literally going to have your good energy recharge, right? And decrease the cooldown of your Sumetsu. So that's actually really, really good. This means you're gonna be able to throw that out a little bit more. You're gonna, okay, on this, you're gonna increase the level. And then on this right here, when Kamisato Art, when Kamisato Ayaka's energy is above 50%, her normal attack damage is increased by 20%. Ooh. When energy is below 50%, her normal attack crit rate is increased by 10%. So either way, you're benefiting on Constellation 4, which is insane. And then on Constellation 6, the final one. When casting Kamisato Art Sumetsu unleashes two smaller additional blade storms, which is more DPS, and each will deal 20% of the original storm's damage. So, wow. 
if you want to go for constellation for her definitely start saving now her constellations do more damage which is a really really good thing about constellations because if you did not know the boy Zhao's constellations only boost his consistency they don't boost his damage whatsoever so really this character boosting the damage the cryo damage and everything she has to offer constellation actually is worth for her and if you're a big simp and you really want constellation going for it will be very ideal she has a really good constellation so if you want constellation for Ayaka, start saving now but if you want just Utao and you just want one Ayaka, that is definitely doable. Go for Utao, grind up your primal gems for three months, and then go for Ayaka. So definitely, definitely gonna be really, really good, I feel like. But if you want Constellation, start saving now. That's my opinion. That's what I think right now. It's, it's everything I feel like is gonna, you know, take effect is her coming in 1.5 or 1.6. If she does come in 1.6, that means you have like four months to save, which is, you know, you literally don't even need to do a versus. You're gonna get both of the characters 100%. So anyway, like I said, if there is a three month margin, make sure you're grinding the events and whatnot so that you could get a guaranteed or a 50% chance to get Aika. Or if you get shot on Hutao and you pull a five star that is not featured, definitely when, once Aika comes around, you get her 100%. So make sure you stack your Prime Gems up. But anyway, like I was saying, wow. Hutao definitely wins this 100%. Go ahead and summon on this character. You have time. Aika's on the way. But she's not that close. So anyway, without further ado, that's what I think. That's my opinion. If you want Constellation, like I said, go for Ayaka. Save for Ayaka. Do not summon on Hutao. But if you don't want Constellation, you're good to go. You can get both, I believe. So, because that three months mar that three month margin, I feel like you definitely could save enough Prime Gems, especially with all the events we're getting in the Monster Festival, especially for the events we're still getting in 1.3. So definitely, guys, look forward to that. And yeah. Without further ado, thank you to everybody who came out to watch this video. I hope you did enjoy, and I hope this did help you out see what you want. Because I know some people do want Constellation for Ayaka, and you don't know whether you want to summon for Hutao or keep saving for Ayaka. I hope this does help you. If you do want Constellation, you need to keep saving. But if you don't really care for Constellation that much, just you just want one C0 Ayaka, go ahead and go for Hutao. Because you're going to be able to get her by the time she comes out with a three-month margin, for sure. So anyway... Thank you to everybody who came out to watch this video. I hope this video did help you. And this was my opinion on things. This was my opinion on who you should go for and why. And yeah, they're both insane characters, insane DPSs. So definitely not something to be slept on. And both, most of all, <laughs> some characters that we simp on a little bit too hard. But anyway, guys, I will catch you guys in the next video. Make sure you subscribe, like, and comment down below what you think. And also hit the notification bell to be notified of all my daily uploads. Without further ado, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.